Okay, today is the day that we remove the bus air conditioning system, so therefore we will have none. Uh, we're going to attempt to put a mini split in, but I don't know exactly how that works with the driving, but we'll see. Uh, so Robert came to save the day. And I put thousands of air conditioners in, never in a bus. But I'm sure it'll be fine. It's big, right? I'm, I'm sure, sure. It, maybe it'll be fine. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing that we have to do is remove this old dinosaur air conditioner so that we can build something to put a new one in. Difficult, isn't it? Mm. That should hold it. Woohoo! We got the compressor in. Are you, uh, mm -hmm. you want to take this back out now? I do not want you to take this back out. Of... Well, Renee, what day is it? It's mini split day. <laughs> 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 I'm really excited about today because today's the day that we're going to get our mini split in. And we've got our resident professional HVAC guy here to help us out, Robert of Robert <laughs> Services. <laughs> and we've got the uh, got the con condensing, unit. condensing unit already under the bus, installed under the bus. Um, we've got the um, air handler, air handler <laughs> that uh, we're putting inside the bus, and then he's going to get it all hooked up. And ready for us, and we will have heat and air. Let's get Let's started. <laughs>
I like to make sure you slide the insulation up real good up over these things um, because unlike a conventional air conditioner at your at your house these uh, both lines will sweat so if you notice this driving down the road and for some reason you can see it you take a cabinet down or whatever and this is icy or sweat it's okay it's supposed Just to do make that sure go back and insulate yeah yeah but that's why we insulate it's not really to to keep the refrigerant warm or cold or any of that it's to keep the sweat from getting on everything okay where's your tape outside I oh yeah I, I can do something <laughs> good job i can do a whole lot it has to be the gopher yeah you're liking this ain't you uh -huh. <laughs> thank you there i have and I hail. And I hail. Yeah. These guys on here, the younger people, don't even know what that means. <laughs> yes, I do. Oh, yeah, you, yeah. you don't remember when I was in third grade? The kid just stood up in the middle of class. He was a little off, but that's okay, you know. <laughs> but he just stood up in the middle of class randomly one day and, and said, "I saw a commercial." And just shouted out the whole commercial. We're all like, who is this kid? <laughs> but that has stuck with me for 30 years. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. But yeah, he's shaking, bacon. I help. I know what that is. <laughs> I may be a millennial, but I'm one of the first ones. You know? <laughs> now, most of the time you wouldn't tape this stuff up yet. You'd pull your vacuum and all that stuff, but I'm so confident in what I'm doing. I'm certain do. that I've got it tight enough. Okay. Yeah. And if not, I've got enough. <laughs> and uh, it's my bus. Yeah, it's your bus. <laughs> and at a 95% discount, who cares? I mean, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. You just get it. If you stop now, I'm ahead. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now it's time to tie the power in. Well, to the inside anyway. It's okay. You don't want that. Oh, God. <laughs> it was an it was extra. extra. Yeah, it was extra. Leftover parts. We always have those, don't we, Scott? Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Never heard of it. Okay, so if you lose the remote, this is an off-on switch. Well, that's good. It hits that little bitty button on the board right there. How do you do temperature if you lose your No. Remote? You just no. off and on. That's, that's all it. You no. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, that. But at least there is something to run it. But we don't know how to change it to the heat. No, I, I pretty, I'm not certain. You have to look in the book. But most of these, that that switch is like 70 degrees. Oh. It, it, heat, so cool, doesn't matter. 70 degrees. What do you mean, look at the book? We threw those out a long time ago. Well, okay, Google. Google. <laughs> what book? There's a book. There's a book? People have books. They don't send books with most of this stuff anymore. No. Not the solar, because you're not supposed to put it in if you don't. But I do. If you need a book, you you're wrong. A book, you're wrong. You don't need to touch it. <laughs> okay. So here's the here's the cool thing about uh, mini splits is that they don't know what color anything is, so we just have to remember to match it from inside to out. And normally, one and two are your uh, uh, your high voltage, mm -hmm. and so I like to make those match to what would normally be high voltage for um, residential, you know, black for. Black and neutral, or white for neutral. Yeah, and see that really messes you up with all this because black is ground, black and is ground AC. In, in twelve volt. Yeah, and so AC. now you're doing both down here, and so it's like very it's really wrong. So yes, it's just wrong. It's all wrong. And then uh, uh, communicating uh, is whatever random color you got. Normally, it's actually red in in these things, but you know. I'm colorblind, so, so so is that wiring terminal? I don't know. It doesn't know the difference. <laughs> I love telling people I'm colorblind while I'm wiring their stuff. You should see the looks I get. I can imagine. Time. Just tell them if you don't, if it, 
As long as you let me wire both sides, it'll probably work. Be, it might work. <laughs> Since your microphone was not on oh. a minute ago, it is now. Oh, okay, hi. Uh, <laughs> Well, since it wasn't on a minute ago when you explained all those wires and what you were doing, you want to give us a recap of what you all those? Oh, what I'm done? Yeah. Okay, so um, uh, normally you would call this liquid line suction line. It's really not. Um, it's suction line and expansion line. It's funny names. But um, since the part that normally splits up an indoor and outdoor unit is in the outdoor unit, uh, these both may frost over, so you got to make sure it's insulated all the way through, um, both lines. Um, and then we ran our power line with it. Uh, many splits get their power from the outdoor unit, not from the house or, in this case, solar battery setup. Um, so now we're running the electrical to it. Uh, next, we'll be doing the drain. And then we'll be done inside and moving outside. So with mini splits, they always send you with a matching, flimsy, delightful <laughs> drain line that's really good for throwing in the trash. <laughs> and I like to run rigid Schedule 40 PVC that won't break, bend, kink, uh, and won't clog because it's not full of ridges to catch dust and, and stuff. So... Not that it won't clog ever, but it probably won't clog ever. So, <laughs> um, I will, I'll leave the original flexible hose coming off of the unit because it's a good place to take it apart and clean it if you ever need to. But, um, I'll run a couple of rigid pieces of PVC and tie it in with a clamp right there. So, if you ever have to get it apart, clean it, you still can. And I'm pretty sure it won't leak all over your thousands of dollars of electronics and our bed so <laughs> if you don't come home with blue all over your hands and you really haven't done any pvc work today <laughs> yeah it doesn't matter if it's two fittings or <laughs> or 50 you have to get it on you yeah and the key is to make sure that you get it all over any open wounds that you have oh yeah that <laughs> those makes are the much best ones those are the best, but yeah. I think that's going to work great when he comes back with that. With that, that one fitting? That one fitting. Be real good downhill and when you strap it up in the corner. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, so um, uh, those copper lines we ran through the floor are, are dangling right here, which, uh, which, as you may be able to notice, to go from here to here, this is a little bit long, so we're going to have to uh, cut them and put some new flare ends on and then they'll attach up right here and uh, if you want to peek up under here your power and uh, from the from the solar system here is going to come in here and the power going to the air handler is also going to tie in right here so you'll see that in just a minute this is yellow and black right yes it is that's what we're going to go with and then we'll is one of these green, the little ones? Um, this one. The big right one? There. Okay. What are these three colors? You got, um, you got blue and blue and red. We'll go with red just because it's different than blue and blue. Okay. <laughs> Can you tell the difference? The, in those three. Okay. Those are the ones we're using. As long as you can tell the difference. That's, That's all it. we care about. Okay, I'm taping up the ones I'm not using, and he can either use them or, or, not. or not or whatever, but I won't cut them off. I didn't cut them off. <laughs> Kevin, the guy that my partner I work with, he gets mad at me every time I cut off extra lengths of wire. One day, we may have to have that. So I'm pissy <laughs> about it. Yeah. Well, apparently his his complaining has rubbed off because you yeah. you hear him even when he's not here to grab it. That's true. <laughs> that is true. And it has also come to fruition that he was right and shut up. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> One is black, two is white, three is yellow. 
spot. Iron's all hooked up. A little extra ram, but this will be all right. Yeah, until you hit a branch or something, it'll be fine. <laughs> Don't run over anything, okay? Okay. <laughs> if it hits that, it's going to get the um, condenser. See? Yeah. Okay, so as you may have noticed, the trip from here to here is not as long as all this stuff is so we have to cut a little copper off um i guess technically we could curl it all up underneath here but that would just be ugly and no thank you <laughs> so we're gonna leave it enough room to have some vibration because it is a bus uh but but uh also we're gonna have to cut some off so we got a we got our tiny little copper cutters for our tiny little copper lines and our black max uh flaring tool so it's a, it's handy to use a quality flaring tool if you're if you're going to do any kind of flare work because flares are really easy to get wrong don't do it halfway no no it's one of those tools that's just worth spending extra money on uh once you cut the stuff off the, and you're going to put a new flare in on your copper. The number one important thing to remember to do is before you do, make sure you put the flare nut back on. Otherwise, you'll cut it right back off and do it again. And that's really fun to do. Voice <laughs> of experience? Yes, yes. Yes, I have done this before. Enough that I will never do it again. So this is a, um, like I say, it's a it's a pretty quality um, flaring tool. It'll uh, it'll bite down and index lines. You can't over crank it. Um, it's got a built-in spring to to break free when it's made the perfect flare for you. That's cool. Yeah. I. You may or may not have heard that, but it breaks free. <laughs> it won't let you over tighten it or over flare it or pinch the flare to one side. It's all indexed and self aligning makes it so much easier to make a uh, a, a a good flare. What is what kind is it? The Black Max flaring tool. No, I'm not sponsored. No, it's none of that stuff. <laughs> and then I don't do YouTube's or none of that stuff normally, but uh, if you're ever going to make flare joint or flare fittings, use a quality tool. This is a quality one. Had one for a long time. <laughs> oh, I don't even have to look at it. I haven't looked and seen if anything's aligned the whole time. And that's amazing because there's a little guide on here to make sure you have, only have it so deep. There's a little indexes on here to make sure it's perfectly aligned in the center just makes it easy and when it does it comes out with a perfect little flare flare joints are are cool because really you just kind of tighten them on there there's no sealant you don't put thread sealant a lot of plumbers will tell you that they do but i don't that's stupid that's the point in a flare joint is that, you, that it's a metal to metal connection so good tight seat you're supposed to do this to a certain torque I do it to that torque right there. See, that's dandy. <laughs> now that now that everything's bolted together and set to a specific torque rating, um, you uh, you have to evacuate the line. It's not very long. Um, you know, it's a pretty short line set, but we still got to pull all the air out of it uh, before we open up the lines and let the refrigerant go in. Um, uh, mini splits aren't like residential normal residential air conditioners in the sense that there's a lot to pull down so you have to hook up a lot of hoses to both sides or any of that these have a special little connector to connect to them uh, and then you just hook up to your normal set of gauges like this and uh, and you, you 
open stuff up and you start pulling a vacuum. This should only take a few minutes on something this small. So uh, on, on the gauges, you're just sitting here, you're, you're pulling it down. And you want to make sure that you're pulling pretty close to uh, what's labeled as 30 inches of mercury. Uh, I'd pull out a different set of gauges if this was a bigger, fancier system, but it's not. So we're going to pull it down. I'm going to let it run for 20 minutes or so just, just because. We don't need to, but just because. Um, and, and then we'll hold that vacuum for another 15, 20 minutes to make sure that it, that it doesn't disappear. Okay, so uh, it's been running a while now. It's pulled down to 30 inches of mercury, which you may or may not understand. That's okay. Um, now we're going to shut the gauges off and uh, make sure that it holds the vacuum for a while. Okay. It's been a few minutes. We're uh, pulled the vacuum. We're still sitting at uh, minus 30 inches of mercury, which means we're holding a really good vacuum, which means our flare joints aren't leaking. And uh, it's time to open it up and turn this thing on. All right, we are all plugged in, uh, ready to run this thing, see how it works. That's the thing about heat pumps is they never really blow like 120 oh. degree air. They just slowly put heat into the air. So. That is going to be so nice. Well, there it goes. It's quiet. Woohoo! And just running. And it is oh, it's moving. so quiet. It's just so slowly it's moving. I can feel it from here. Yeah. Yeah, it blows good. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we've got it set to 81. And you, it's running. You can hear it very quiet. That's one of the parts I love about this is that it's not going to be a real loud AC like an RV AC is. Even the uh, compressor here. Condenser? Condenser is the whole thing, yeah. Even the condenser is really quiet. I'm very excited. This is a happy, happy moment for me. <laughs> okay, so I'm feeling of it. I can feel good, warm air coming out. It's pretty strong, too. I mean, I can feel it way out here. All right, so right now in, in Texas, it's 60 degrees outside. And inside this bus, it's somewhere around 68 degrees. And we're putting out 108 degree air, which is plenty warm. I'd say to heat this place up in just a few minutes. <laughs> Woohoo! Okay, so right now, we, we just wanted to run a quick check. Uh, running in heat mode, running for a while. Um, it it's pulling about three point three amps or so. Uh, so you take volts, which is one hundred twenty volts times the uh, amps. That gives you how many watts you're actually using, uh, which is the big concern for a solar system. So uh, it's it's just under four hundred watts uh, is what we're using. So that's that's about uh, you know leave 1600 watts to figure out and play with for the rest of them <laughs> so everything's in it's working great the uh, checked it all out it looks like it's doing a good job thank you to robert of robert oh, services <laughs> he did awesome happy to help. great happy to help. The, the price is right <laughs> that's right at least for us there you go. There you go. so next time what are we going to be working on the cabinetry on both sides of it to cover all of this. Yep. It's the hope. That's that's they the hope. As, All long right. as, as long as this wire keeps running, we're good. We're good to go. <laughs> we're good. All right. So we'll see you guys next time. But until then, keep, keep it, it old school. school.